Hey guys, good morning. Can you all hear me? Hi, good morning guys, and welcome to today's Citrons webinar series. Uh, my name is Adrian, and we are going to continue our Arduino session from our last month's session, uh, part one. Today we'll be covering in more detail uh, and also to continue on with the part one session. Today is a part two session. Great. Good morning, guys. Thanks for joining. And uh, if you haven't watched the first part yet, fear not, I am going to do a short recap on what happened during the first session. And after that, after the recap, I will continue on with our part two session. All right. If you are joining, uh, if this is the first time, if this is your first time joining the Cytron's webinar series, uh, so how, how we do things here is that we encourage you to speak up. If you have questions during the session, in the middle of the session, you can drop your questions in the comment section. I will read your questions during pauses in between, and I will try my best to answer your questions as fast as possible. So take it as a learning platform here. We are all learning here. And if you have questions, again, ask, um, or else this will become a recorded session for a later um, means I won't be able to respond to you immediately after that. So let's get started. We only have one hour, uh, same like our usual session. We only have one hour and I will try my best to, you know, uh, compress everything in this one hour for you guys. Okay. So um, today, simple three things that I would like to cover. And of course, I'll also share about our learning outcomes for today. But first things first, I'm going to do a quick recap on what happened last month. So last month in the first week of September, right now it's October already, by the way. Last week, uh, last month, first week of September, we had this introduction to Arduino, uh, Let's Learn Arduino Part 1. And basically what I did is... Um, I introduce what is Arduino, where you can download Arduino, how you configure your Arduino, how you communicate, your, I mean, how you connect your Arduino to your laptop, right? Um, do some simple configuration, minor configuration, so that they can communicate with each other and run some simple program. So the whole idea of the previous session is to build a simple uh, coffee pot temperature sensing device which we did during the previous session. If you want to watch that session, you can always check at the description below. I have included the YouTube link. You can go back and watch after this session. So over there, um, I'm going to recap more later uh, with our following slides, but I'm going to stop here and continue with the next part of the ag agenda. After that, I'm going to share with you on the today's learning outcome, what you will learn today. All right, the things that you will learn. Um, I will try my best to not clash with what we did in the previous session. I'll try to introduce you something um, more. So if you are a beginner, if you are new to Arduino, this is still the session for you because what I'm going to introduce to you is fairly new. If you haven't did, if you haven't learned any programming before, uh, this is for you. All right, and same goes to hardware. Part three, I will be doing a demonstration, same like the previous session. I will show my webcam on the hardware. I will do some connection on the, all right. Uh, I will do some hardware connection, all right, explain to you some of the connections. And then later on, we will move to the programming side. How do you program your Maker Uno? Okay. All right, great. So uh, I see more and more people are coming in. Thanks guys for tuning in. I. Hope you will find this uh, session valuable. And again, if you have questions, ask me on the comment section. I think we have one question already. All right? Can you do learning Raspberry Pi? Uh, unfortunately, today I will be covering on Arduino. But yes, I will take your feedback in, and we will see in the future if we are if we are able to conduct more Raspberry Pi sessions as well. So thanks for the feedback. And if you have more feedback at the end of this session, we will also have um, a feedback form. All right, once you fill in the feedback form, you'll be able to receive an e-certificate of participation. So uh, bear in mind, if you are here for the participation certification, 
you can fill in the form at the end of this session, right? At the end, okay? Great. Recap, okay, this is our recap. Uh, I explained this in the previous session. I'm gonna explain it again. What is Arduino? Clear-cut Arduino is an open source electric electronic platform. Open source means that whatever that involves with this Arduino or Maker Uno, uh, right now, this photo over here I'm showing, it's Mikko. No? It's a local product from Malaysia uh, uh, created by Satran Technologies. So it's actually based on the Arduino itself. The circuitry and everything is based on Arduino. It's just that our local engineers improve it into, you know, to fit the, the students' needs uh, and the teachers' needs. So it's a little bit different, but in, during my demonstration, I'll be showing you Maker Uno, how I'm using Maker Uno to create the temperature sensing coffee pot. And so again, open source, it only means that everything around revolve around the Maker Uno or the Arduino is free for all. The information is free for all. You can go and Google and search for the schematics of Arduino, how you can build your own Arduino. Everything is there. And how do you want to build projects using Arduino? Everything is there. The community is there. Uh, all the informations are out there and it's open source. It's free, okay, free. Number two, consists of an easy to use hardware and software. So Arduino, it's built for and students in mind. So it's actually built by an Italian teacher, school teacher. I mean, design um, and vision. He, he had a vision uh, to teach students electronics so he started off with this arduino and then later on it gained a lot of traction a lot of people love it a lot of students love it and it enables people that doesn't have engineering background to build electronics project because it comes with a very um, user friendly it comes with a very friendly outlook and a very friendly interface for people to pick up electronics so again, you don't need to have a degree in engineering to learn Arduino or electronics. You just need to have the interest to get started. And once you start, you will you will find out that A is actually simple. It's not very difficult. So that's the point of this session. And same goes to all the Let's Learn Arduino session. I'll be showing you the simple tools on how you can get started in your Arduino journey. Um, I won't be covering very, very complicated stuff right, to keep you motivated at the same time. But of course, if you have questions on the more complex stuff, you can ask as well. Number three, designed to make electronics more accessible to everyone. This is what I mentioned earlier. It's not just for engineering uh, background people. It's for art people, for musicians, uh, for accounts, for anything, basically anything. So once you introduce electronics to your world, you'll be able to see that there's endless possibilities in projects around you. I'm gonna give you a simple example, um, arts. Okay, you, you've seen that recently arts is, you know, there's an interdisciplinary um, right, uh, events happening among arts. You don't just see arts anymore, you see uh, LEDs, you see Right, different different forms of art with a mixture of electronics. It's no longer just a paint, a paintbrush, and a canvas. It's more than that. Right, people are using electronics to ex express art. Same goes to music. Um, you have digital music. You have electronics music. So it's not really tied down to what you know or you think you know. Once you mix it to do something different, you mix it with electronics. You can actually do more. Okay, I'm not going to dwell more on that. It's a very huge topic over there. Uh, we can debate every day about oh, what is Arduino, uh, who, who will benefit on this. It's a long, long topic, but I hope you see what I'm trying to say here. Yeah, it definitely will bring benefit to you. Maybe uh, anything, lah. but as long as you try it, and once you try it, you'll be able to see the possibilities of it. All right. So this is what we did last session. Um, I'm just gonna connect the dots here. First, we have a laptop, we configure our laptop, we install Arduino in the laptop. I showed where you can get the Arduino in the previous session, what driver you need to install in the previous session. 
right? And how do you prepare your laptop so that it can communicate with your Maker Uno, with your Arduino? So that's the first thing we did in the previous session. And of course, I ex do a lot of explanations like um, how do you connect the circuit? How do you, you know, get started? How do you build a program? How do you get started? I focus a lot on how to get started in the previous session so that um, when you actually start something, you, you don't feel intimidated by the Arduino itself. And later on, once I introduce the Maker Uno, the Arduino, I also move into introducing um, LM35. I think the whole focus on the previous session is LM35, the temperature sensor here. And how do I connect this sensor to um, this metal container? But of course, I did show how you light up an LED using battery and a, a little simple explanation on uh, voltage and current by using a simple battery right? in comparison with Arduino. So you will be able to see that things that you already know using battery lighting up an LED versus Arduino. They are actually the same thing. It's just that um, if you light up an LED with a battery, you can't really tell when the battery should turn on the LED and turn off the LED. But with an Arduino, you can tell your Arduino when to turn on the LED and when to turn off the LED. So that's the only difference. It's intelligent. It's smart. You can program it to do what you want it to do. Okay. And in that session, I also quickly demonstrated how you can just hook up your temperature sensor on this metal container. I have everything here, by the way. Uh, later, I will switch my camera and show you the setup that I did in the previous session. So once I have this metal container with the temperature sensor inside, I pour some water into my coffee pot, uh, hot water in, in the coffee pot, and then I place the coffee pot above this metal container. And we do some readings some data acquisition, we see the readings from the um, Arduino serial monitor, and then we'll be able to see, oh, the temperature is rising, the graph goes up, and then when I remove the tea coffee pot, and then the temperature will go down. Okay, so this is what we did last week, and then I ended the session over there. In today's session, I will be covering more detail on, it's a continuation of what we did in the previous session. All right. First things first, I will explain to you control structure in Arduino IDE. Uh, it's not limited to just for Arduino. It's used in all different languages, um, Python, C Sharp, um, et cetera, et cetera. So a lot of programming languages have this control structure, and one of it is called the if-else statement. I'm going to explain that. I'm going to use this if-else statement in the Arduino later on on how you can program multiple LEDs to react according to the temperature of the teapot or the coffee pot. So we are going to use if else statement. If uh, the temperature is this much, then do something. Else, the temperature is this much, do something. Later, I have some block diagram to show you so that you'll be able to understand clearer. Am I talking too, spa? Am I talking too fast? If I'm talking too fast, let me know. <laughs> I will slow down a bit. But uh, if no, then I will continue my pace. Okay, and the third thing that you will learn today is how to use a breakboard. In the previous session, I only show you how to use a block terminal. You know, you click and then you press. It's the same thing as the screw one where you learn in KH. Um, but right now, I'm going to show you how you can use a breakboard. It's a simpler tool for beginners to learn electronics. You don't need to do soldering. You don't need to um, tie your wires together. It doesn't look very messy. It's very neat. A breadboard looks like a piece of bread, but it's uh, it's not edible. It's just a piece of plastic that helps you to build your circuit. Okay. And of course, I have some little quiz about breadboard so that you can understand better. So here are the list of materials. After this slide, I'm going to show you the materials that I'm using here. A computer with Arduino IDE, uh, which is the computer that I'm using right now, the laptop. It can be a laptop, it can be a PC, it can be a Raspberry Pi, right? as long as you install Arduino IDE software in your um, device. And then you will need a microcontroller. For now, I'm using Arduino Maker Uno. And then number three, you will need a micro B USB cable. 
Okay, the micro B USB cable, uh, I have it here as well. It's for you to communicate with your laptop, uh, to form the communication between your Arduino and your laptop. Number four, block terminals. This is what I did last week, uh, demonstrate to you how voltage and current works. So you see, I didn't highlight this black color wordings because this is the things that we used last week. I'm only, only highlighting the red color one, seven, eight, and nine. Well, these are the things that we will use today. So we have masking tape, scissors, double-sided tape. Uh, we're not going to use it today. Metal container, it's already here. And then we are going to use some jumper wires, male to male, female to male. And some LEDs with resistors, 220 ohm resistors, and a brick board. Okay. Let me switch my camera right now quickly so that you'll be able to see the setup here. Okay, hold on. Camera. All right. So this is the setup here that I have. Um, Maker Uno. Okay. This is the Maker Uno. This is the metal container that I'm talking about. All right. This is what we did last week. Um, the temperature sensor is here. Uh, I um, improvise a little bit. Uh, all right. Uh, strengthen the attachment for the sensor to the metal container here and then i have my coffee pot here um the water is not really hot lah, but the idea is i place it on top here the coffee pot on top here and then the temperature conducts into this metal casing and then the temperature sensor down here will be able to detect the temperature not the exact temperature because there's you know there's gap in between uh, you need the uh, temperature to you know thermodynamics uh, it, it doesn't really um, translate to the temperature in the water uh, in the coffee pot but again you'll be able to see how hot is this uh, coffee pot here and then the temperature sensor connected to the maker uno all right so all of this i explained in part one you can go and watch the part one and learn about how you connect this then you have your USB connected to the laptop here. So I've prepared a couple of simple right, jumper wires. I only need like four of them, two LEDs and two resistors and a breakboard. Okay, this is the breakboard that I have, right, a tiny little breakboard. I'm going to explain more on this later. Uh, same goes to the LEDs and the resistors uh, and all the components here. But let's continue with our slides. Okay, before I proceed, let me look at some of the questions here. So today we are going to add LEDs to the container. Uh, we are going to add LEDs on the breadboard. I'm not going to drill hole on a container, but it's going to be on top of the breadboard. Everything will be done on the breadboard today. It's easier to troubleshoot. It's easier to see the bigger picture on how you connect electronic components to your Arduino. But of course, if you want to, you know, progress, uh, putting your LEDs into the container, by all means, go ahead. I actually tried to drill the container. It's not easy. Uh, it's a very hot, hot container. You need a very strong drill and a very strong drill bit. Okay. So last week, um, oh, this is what we are going to do this week. Today, the coffee pot temperature sensing device, if the coffee pot is hot, LED, red LED is going to light up. If the coffee, coffee pot is cold, the green LED is going to light up. It's a very simple challenge. Um, if you're watching this session, the recorded session, I would like you to try this project before you continue watching this session so that you can experience it yourself. And then later on, you can check the answers from the later session or from here, all right? Um, so this is what we are gonna do. And we are gonna use the if else statement to do this, to make this happen. Okay. So red, green. Continue on with the components just now. I, I did mention that I'm going to explain what is a breadboard, how can you use it? So a very clear explanation here. There's a front side and there's a back side of 
the breadboard. The back side, all right, it's covered with a piece of um, double-sided tape and uh, a piece of layer, all right, a layer to prevent the exposure of the metal plates in there. So breadboard is constructed with a piece of plastic, okay, not braid, plastic inside with metal pieces, which allows you to connect your wires or your components together. Example, on the left side, on the top side, you'll be able to see there's this green color wire, this is wire one, and there's another wire on the other end. They are both connected on the same line. This means that both wires are actually connected to together because they are connected in the same line. Right? Just uh, bear with me first, understand the concept of the red board first. Later, I have some quizzes. Then you can practice and you know see whether you understand or not. So wire one and wire two over here, they're in the same line because the metal plates in there, the metal conductor are a long straight conductor. So they are connected. And for the center part over here, you see the wires here, they are connected in a vertical line because the metal plates in there are vertical. Vertical, vertical, vertical. So they have to connect in the same line. Claim. On the breadboard, you'll be able to see numbers. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, until 30 for this small little breadboard. And then um, the vertical line, you'll be able to see A, B, C, D, E until J. These are just coordinates for uh, you to identify which point you want. Example, 10A, then you know it's over here, 10A. I, I'm not sure whether you can see it or not, but um, there are labels here on the X and Y axis. So what students normally do is they will look, okay, they will go Google some instructions, some photos of how people connect their circuits. And then they will look at the video and then they will pause the video at the exact moment of the breadboard and the circuit. And then they will zoom in the breadboard and see which pin, which wire is connected to which pin hole on the breadboard. Then they will start calculating. So two, two, three, four, five, six. And then uh, the X exists, A, B, C, D. And then they connect that point. This happens all the time. It's not wrong. You want to be accurate. You want to make no mistakes. But once you understand how a breadboard works, you don't really care about where you connect it as long as the connection is there. So understand what is a breadboard, how to use a breadboard, then you don't have to worry about how to connect the circuit anymore. You understand how to connect the circuit already. Okay. So I'm going to proceed with a couple of quizzes about breadboard to test and see whether you understand or not. I hope you guys participate in this. Uh, you just need to answer me yes, no, A, B, C, things like that. So the question one, exercise one, are both wires connected? It's a simple one. Is wire one connected to wire two? Are they connected? Guys, try to, you know, it, it's just a very simple basic exercise. I have like four questions here to get you on board, to get you to understand how a red box works. So do we have any takers? Yep. Yes, I see uh, multiple answers. So the question is, are both wires connected? Okay. All right. Are wire one connected to wire two? <laughs> A wire one connected to wire two. If I have these two wires, I want to connect them together. I don't want to tie them together like that, right? I don't want to put them together. I don't want to solder them together. I want to use the breadboard to connect this wire one and wire two. So I have seen some say yes, some say no. Um, the answer is actually yes. Right? The answer is yes for this one. Okay? The answer is yes because... I actually just flip the breadboard from the previous photo over here. Remember here, actually these two wires is the same as these two. All right, the metal plate in here is, right now it's horizontal, horizontal. Means 
when I connect this wire one, the metal plate inside will also connect to wire two. All right. So remember, this is exercise one. I'm going to go on with a more complicated one. Exercise two, are both wires connected right now? Okay, I bring the wire one to the other side. Are they now connected? Wire one and wire two, are they connected right now? Give it a try. Okay. I, I see some answers. I see a lot of answers and very consistent ones. Yes, the, um, no, <laughs> the answer is no, not yes. No, the wires are not connected. Okay, because there's a separator in between these two sides. The wire one is connected here. The metal plate comes until here, A, B, C, D, E. And then over here is empty, kosong. There's a bridge cap, correct? There's a bridge cap over there. And then, um, wire two connect here and it will end at F, right? J I H G H G F until here. So they are not connected. When you're using a breadboard, no matter the size, big or small, always look out for the bridge gap, the separator. Okay. Uh, based on my experience, I actually, you know, back in university, I when I tried connecting a very complicated circuit and um, I spent actually weeks troubleshooting an issue, but in the end, I found out that I, I, I missed out. I to see I didn't see there's a separator on the breadboard that I'm using. So I spent weeks and weeks of troubleshooting, and then I noticed, eh, I didn't connect these two wires together. Wasted my few weeks of time. So it's very important to understand the breadboard. Um, today I'm showing you this. But maybe tomorrow you'll be using a longer version, the longer breadboard, and then it has different separators as well. So understand the breadboard before you start building circuits on top of it. Next, are both wires connected? Okay, this is an easier one. Wire two and wire wire one and wire two, are they connected together? They're not in the same line. Are they connected? All right, let's do a quick one and then um, I have one more question about breadboard, and then that's it now. Okay. All right. Then I give some time. Some say no. Okay. Great. So if you don't want to answer, fine. But um, look at this question and then answer it yourself. Yes or no? Okay. The answer is. No, the answer is no because they are in the different line. Okay, understand? Get it? They are in a different line, so they are not connected. The metal plates are separated. Wire 1 and wire 2 are in a separate line. And last question, is wire 1 connected to wire 2? This is a test. Okay, are they connected to wire 1 or wire 2? Is wire one connected to wire two? So this is not a yes and no question. It's a wire one, wire two, or wire three uh, answer. It's not a yes or no and uh, question. It's a either wire two or wire three. Okay la, Actually, my slide it circled the answer over there already. I forgot to put the transition there, but. You guys are right. I, I, I'm just trying to like, uh, okay, I don't see the circle there. But yeah, the connection is wire one to wire two because they are in the same vertical line, vertical line. So wire one is connected to wire two and wire three is not connected to anything. Okay, uh, I think you guys got it already. Uh, you guys understand the concept of breadboard. I'm going to show you later on how to build your circuit on top of this breadboard. I hope you'll be able to see clearly. Lah. Okay. Okay. Let's proceed to uh, the demonstration on building the circuit. We have 30 minutes left just in time. Lah. Okay. I'm going to switch my camera. We are going to proceed to the hardware first. 
So every time when your students are building projects or you and your friends are building projects, usually there are two different roles. One person will be building the hardware and the other person will be programming the Arduino. But both person have to talk to each other. They have to tell them, hey, I'm connecting this pin. You have to program this pin. You have to communicate with each other and let each other know what hardware connection are you making so that I have to program based on that hardware. In this case, I am doing it myself. So of course, I have to connect the hardware first before I program it, not the other way around. I don't program it, then I connect the circuit. Okay, but of course you can program it and then connect your circuit. And then you have to go back to your software and upload it and test it. Okay. Over here, breadboard, a closer look. It's the same thing as the slides that I showed just now, right? We have over here, the connection, vertical, and then over here, horizontal. I am going to connect two different LEDs. Remember what's our objective here? We want to program the temperature sensor to turn on either green or red LED, depending on the temperature here. So I'm going to connect the green LED first. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to go ahead and connect. Okay, I'm going to connect here. Once you understand the breadboard, it doesn't matter where you want to connect, right? You can connect it here. You can connect it here. You can connect it anywhere as long as you don't connect it this way. All right, this is a no one. Okay, see? If I connect on the same line, then what does it mean? It means that you're connecting these two legs together. All right. It's the same thing as you taking it out and then touching it together like that. They are connected together. So don't do that. And this is a yes. This is correct. OK. For an LED, there are two different um, leg, uh, there are two different LED, right? There's this negative LED and there's this positive anode and cathode. The longer leg is the anode and the shorter leg is the cathode. But not of, normally I'll tell my student, hey, I, I want to cut the wire. I want to cut the leg to make it same. I OCD, I want to see it same length. So I'll cut it and then let me know which one is positive or which one is negative. So how do you do it? There's a tiny little flag here, a uh, triangle flag inside the LED. That's the cathode. Okay, I don't think you can see it here, but that's the cathode. My favorite way of identifying is to find the flat side of the LED. So the LED is not circle, you know. It's not circle. One side is flat. No? The flatter side is the, um, the negative, and then the round side is the positive. Okay, let me turn on the light so you can see better. Okay. All right, the flag is negative. So now I'm going to connect like that, long on the right and the short on the left. I've connected here like that. I'm going to do the same for my red LED. I'm going to connect it further away so we don't. No, we don't confuse. Oh, yeah. Okay. Two LEDs. Next, we will need resistors. So what is a resistor? A resistor is used to resist additional current. Um, it's to control the current from flowing to your LEDs. If you don't have a resistance for your circuit, then the current flowing through your LED will be, you know, uncontrolled. It will be full, full force into your LED, then you will potentially burn your LED. So having a resistor connected to the anode side, the positive side, is all right, it's important, especially when you conduct a class for, I mean, if you conduct uh, Arduino class for your students, 40 students. If all of them don't use a resistor, then you will be able to see uh, your whole class having burned LEDs. So you don't want that to happen. Have a resistor there. I'm using 220 ohm. Uh, this is a, 
a recommended um, resistance value. I'm not going to dwell more on how do you calculate this resistance, but the higher the resistance, the more resistance you get by resisting the current. So your LED won't be that bright if you use a higher resistance value. But if you use a low resistance value, your LED will be brighter. But there's a risk of burning it as well. I'm connecting it on the anode side. As you can see, see the resistor and the LED, they are on the same row because I want them to be connected together. Same goes to this green color LED. And then over here, you see this resistor leg. I connected it here. It's the, in the same line over here with this resistor. You see it? They are in the same line. Okay. But I want them to light up individually. I want to program this LED to light up and this LED to light up. I don't want them to light up together. So I cannot share the same line, right? So I have to move this somewhere else. I can move it here. So now this and this are on the same different line. Okay. Next, I want to connect this LED to my Maker Uno. So I'll take two wires. Green wire, uh, okay, I'm going to follow the color. Green wire to my over here. I hope you're not confused. So why am I connecting it here? Because this leg is in the same line all the way here at the end here. They're in the same horizontal line, ah, vertical line. They're in the same vertical line all the way down here. So green color is connected to green LED. Red wire, I'm going to connect next to it. Net red wire is connected to red LED. Normally, um, students or people who follow the rules are like the LED you see, I mean the breadboard, you will see there's a positive and negative symbol here. It represents positive uh, voltage and negative voltage. Negative is usually ground. So you don't really need to set a rule for yourself like, hey, the positive have to be 5 volt, the negative have to be ground. No, it doesn't have to be that. Um, as long as you understand what you are connecting, it doesn't have to be 100% 5 volt, 100% ground. No. Uh, you can use it for any purpose you want once you understand how to use a breadboard. And in this case, I'm using both as voltage, as 5 volt, to power up my LEDs. Red for red LED, green for green LED. Okay. All right, uh, it's a bit blur, but um, let's focus. Okay, next thing, I will need to connect ground. I want to connect, okay, I already connected one leg to the resistor. What about the other leg of the LED? I haven't connected the other leg of the LED yet. Let me focus a bit. Okay, the other leg of the LED, you can see they are not connected yet. So now I want to connect these two legs together. Hi, yep. Okay. Can you see? So this leg is the same line as this yellow wire. And this leg is the same line as this yellow wire. So now all, both of them are connected together. And this is the cathode LED, uh, the cathode leg. So I have to connect this negative side to a ground on my Arduino. So black color to ground, GND. Ground is the negative side of a battery. And then these two, to the positive side of the battery, which is on my Maker Uno. Okay, so now I'm going to connect this black color to ground, GND. I won't zoom in close to let you see, but I'm going to read it out. This is to GND. GND, you won't be able to see it from here. Green color, I'm going to connect to pin number 7. And red, I'm going to connect to pin 6. Remember that green color, seven, six, red color. So this is all you need for your circuit. All right, now everything else depends on the program in your Maker Uno. You have to program it, let it decide. Hot, turn on this code, 
turn on this. Okay. So take your USB, connect straight to your Maker Uno. But let me switch to my screen first. Um, to my here. Okay. Program. I'm going to connect straight to this. All right, you'll be able to see LED lighting up because my previous code um, light up some stuff like, in there. But don't care about this. Right now, let's focus on programming the um, the Arduino, the Maker Uno right now. This program is written in the part one session of this uh, series. If you want to understand how all of this works, you can check out the previous session. But I'm going to quickly go through it again. Right over here, I have temperature sensor. My temperature sensor, the, the sensor inside this container, it's connected to A0, A0 pin on the Arduino. And this is a variable name. So I name my A0 as temp underscore sensor. So temp underscore sensor, I place it in here. Pin mode temp sensor input means that I am telling this pin or this sensor that is connected to this pin that you are an input. Input means that you supply signal to my Arduino. Input signal into my Arduino. Okay. And then over here, I have serial begin 9600. This is to begin to configure monitor feature. So I'll be able to uh, print the data that I'm collecting from my temperature sensor. So if I read the sensor here, right, I, I want to be able to see what I'm reading from here. That's why I need to use serial monitor. Then there is this temperature value. Temperature value equal to analog read temp sensor. So I am reading the values collected from my temp sensor, which is A0. A0, I don't remember. So this A0 is actually here, A0. Temp value, temperature value will show me the value of the temperature I'm reading here. So let's say I upload this code here. I upload this program. I just click the upload button here. And I already connected my Maker Uno to the, um, yeah, to my laptop. I just need to click upload, and then once it completes uploading, okay, over here it will show done uploading. The temperature sensor right now is measuring temperature. Um, I am going to use serial plotter here instead of serial monitor. Serial plotter, serial plotter will let me see the value. As you can see, right, uh, this is the value I'm getting. So it delays every 0 0.5 second. It will give me one signal every 0 0.5 seconds. I am not sure whether my sensor is working or not. So I need to, you know, put some heat on top of this sensing device. Uh, let me just place my coffee pot. Okay, let me, let me show a bigger screen. And then I'll show this bigger. I'll place my coffee pot up here. Okay, higher. My coffee pot is actually uh, not hot. Lah. So I'll just refill some hot water. My screen is not clear. Uh, which screen? Okay, let me... Okay, let's take a look at this, uh, focus on the graph, and then you can see my teapot, right? I'm just going to add hot water into the teapot, right? As I add hot water in, my temperature rises. The graph, you will see the spike will keep on going up and up, keep going higher and higher. Um, it means that the, right, the temperature is, the heat is going into the, it's conducting into the metal container here. Let's add more. Lah. Right, it's going higher and higher. I'm going to close it to retain the heat. So this shows that the temperature sensor is working. And it means that we can proceed to our next step. 
Okay. Um, let's look at some questions here before I proceed. Simple question. INT means initiate. And what happens if you replace INT to the hashtag define? It's the same. So INT is a short form for integer. Integer means number. Um, it shows you number. You need to initiate a variable with, a, you know, um, you need to tell him whether you are a number, you are a character, or you are, uh, etc. Like you need to tell the variable what is it for, what you made it for. In this case, I am I made my um, over here. I created my variable based on integer. Means whatever that is going to show here have to be an integer. Right. I can use define as well if I want to define that integer as a specific pin. So for this case, constant integer temperature sensor, it means that whatever uh, that is in this temperature sensor, A0 will remain constant. No one is going to change this. I can't change the temperature sensor variable anymore. Right? It's constant, it's fixed. Okay, but of course I can write it as hash define, hash define, and then A0, and then uh, it will also define this variable as A0 as well. So there are multiple ways to do it, but I don't want to confuse you. I'm just going to keep stick to this constant integer as of now. Again, programming is very flexible. You can do it in different, different ways. Um, and there are many, many different practices uh, on how you want to program it. Uh, I'm programming it on the, the way that I feel comfortable with right now. But of course, there are better practices out there. So thanks for the question, Shaman. I'm going to proceed with our main purpose here today, which is to light up the LED. And But before I do that, I remember in the previous session, someone asked me, hey, teacher, the value that I'm getting here is actually not Celsius. How is it possible like 90 degrees Celsius? Don't lie to me, like, teacher. 75 degrees Celsius and you can still touch. Uh, this is not real Celsius. <laughs> That's true that this is not real Celsius. So I'm going to show you how you can insert a formula to calculate this into a proper Celsius. Uh, that involves in a lot of different maths. But I'm going to quickly go through it. Less than five minutes. Hopefully, you will be able to catch. If you can't, it's OK. This is um, not easy. OK. So over here, I, I want to calculate the, um, the Celsius. So I'm going to create a new variable. Instead of using integer, I'm going to use float. Float means that the number that I'm getting will be in decimal places. So temperature Celsius. This is a new name that I give him, temperature Celsius. I'm going to use temperature Celsius, and I'm going to insert a formula for my temperature Celsius. First things first, I need to know what is this temperature value. So basically, this temperature value that I'm getting is um, in bits, uh, bits, B-I-T-S. Uh, it's not in voltage. The voltage is translated into bits. And in Arduino, Arduino is actually, the Maker Uno is actually in 10 bits, right? Yeah, I'm going to go into uh, some very complex stuff. So bear with me. This is the Maker Uno that I'm using. If I scroll down to the specification, I'll be able to, I'll be able to see analog input, right? It's 10 bit, okay, 10 bit. So how do I calculate 10 bit? I will just need to calculate 2 to the power of 10. 2 to the power of 10, I'll be able to get 1024. So in the signal that I always receive here, the maximum number it will go is 1023, starting from 0. So it's still 1024, but 0 to 1023. Okay, This is because I'm using a 10-bit Arduino. Clear? If you are not clear, it's OK. Uh, I am going to a more deeper topic right now. So 1024, I want to convert my signals that I'm receiving right now, this signal that I'm receiving right now, into voltage. So how do I do it? First, I will need to divide in 1024. Uh, and the signal that I'm getting is 5 volt from my Arduino. So 10 value multiplied by 
5,000, 5,000 millivolt. Okay, equivalent to 5 volt. And then I'll divide into 1024. Okay. And then uh, 1023. And then um, this will give me voltage value, right? Just voltage value. Huh? It's not it's not actual temperature Celsius yet. Uh, long story short, you will need to divide another 10 to be able to get Celsius value. Okay, this can be all uh, understood by looking at the data sheet of your um, temperature sensor. So this sensor is what I'm using right now. This is the data sheet. The data sheet provides you every single thing you need to know about the sensor. But of course, it's a technical data sheet. So a lot of words, a lot of very complicated stuff. But all you need to focus here is that it's linear. 10 millivolt means there is one Celsius per Celsius, 10 millivolt per Celsius. That's why I divide it by 10. Clear? So this will give me Celsius. Upload your program. Uh, Marcus Chong. That means the integer for y exists is analog value. I, if you are talking about the graph here, yep, yeah, this is the analog value that is reading, the analog signal that is reading, but in bits already converted through the uh, analog digital conversion. So now you are converting it back to analog voltage. This is digital signals. After uploading this, I will be able to receive. Uh, right now, this is in Celsius. Wait. Okay. I am still reading temperature value. As you can see, I'm still printing temperature value. So I need to print this temperature Celsius here. And upload. So by doing this, I'll be able to get my temperature in Celsius. Zero, 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 zero. Right. So in order to um be able to see my value, right? Yeah, I'll need to convert some into temperature value. So I'm reading this as integer. Okay, let me check my formula. This is on two, two, four. And I will need to change this to float as well. It means that um, all the signals that I'm receiving right now will be um, decimal places. Again, guys, don't feel intimidated by what I'm showing right now. Okay, these are the in-between parts that you don't really need to focus in it's more on how you can program the features that you, you are aiming for okay right now i'm getting um degree celsius so i got my celsius going on uh the coffee pot is still sitting there that's why it's still warm around 30 seven degrees celsius once i remove it the temperature will drop i'm gonna let it drop a bit uh, at the same time i'm going to program the leds to light up so remember when i say this spin mode i'm telling my sensor that you are an input you're an input you're an input right now i'm gonna tell my leds hey you are an output you're an output remember you are an output you're not an input because you're supplying power to your leds so what I need to do is pin mode, uh, but of course I need to set up some variables for my LEDs. So integer LED for hot. The LED for hot is connected to pin number six. six. And integer LED for cold is connected to pin number seven. Pin mode LED underscore hot. I'll call it as an output. You're an output LED. 
Same goes to the LED code. I'm gonna tell him that you are an output to LED. You are not an input. I'm not gonna ask you to give me voltage. I'm gonna give you voltage so that you can light up. So remember input and output, the purpose of it. Another way to differentiate input and output is output, you will be able to see the output. You'll be able to see the LED lighting up. Oh, but input, you can't see anything. You can see the signal from your laptop, from your screen. Okay. So now I got these two LED ready to go. Next, oh, we need to use the if else. This is what we are here for, the if else. So simple as that, if the temperature Celsius is greater than 30 degrees, simple, right? In greater than 30 degrees, or greater than equal to 30 degrees. This is called operators. Um, you can learn the operators later on. There are many, many different operators. Okay, this is greater than, this is lesser. Or now, right now I'm using greater or equal. It means that if it's more than 30 or equal to 30, you are gonna do something. Now I'm gonna open a bracket and I'm gonna close a bracket. Anything I type inside these two brackets, is going to perform the action. It's going to happen when the temperature is more than 30. So what do we say? When it's over 30 degrees Celsius, I am going to light up my LED because it's hot. So digital right, digital right is where you supply power from your Arduino to your LED. Digital right, I want to supply L voltage to my LED hot pin. So I write LED hot, the name is always the same. And I type high. High means supply voltage to that pin. What about my LED cold? Okay, since it's already 30, more than 30, it's no longer cold, right? So I want to keep it close. I want to keep it off. So all I need to do is change this LED cold to low. See the difference? If I put high, it's going to supply voltage to that pin and it's going to light up. If I put low, then it's going to turn off. High on, low off. Clear? Next. If it's greater than 30, it's going to light up my hot LED and turn off my cold LED. Else. Else. Else means that if it's not equal to not equal to this, it's not equal to greater than 30, then I'm gonna do the opposite thing. I'm gonna turn off my low and turn out my high, uh, turn on my cold LED. So in this way, in this way, when it's hot, it turns on the hot, turns off the cold. But when it's not hot, it turns off the hot, it turns on the cold. This is the meaning of if and else. If number one, it do number one. Else, it do number two. Faham. Next thing, I just need to upload my code inside my Arduino and then we'll be able to see how it responds to the temperature. By right, right now, the green LED should light up. Let's have a bigger, closer look. Right, right now, the green LED should light up because it's cold. And uh, I'm going to show this, my signal. Uh, I'm still gonna show my signal so that you'll be able to see clearer. Okay, right now my temperature is, let's take a closer look. Temperature is around 27 degrees Celsius. I am going to place my coffee pot on top and hopefully it's still hot so that the temperature rises up to 30. 30 over here, Sini. 30. Once I reach 30, red color LED is going to light up and yeah, green color LED is going to turn off. Yo, Okay. Uh, it's already 12 o'clock. 
I let's see the results while at the same time, if you have questions, ask me right now. I am able to answer you while we are waiting for this to go up 30. <laughs> okay. Nampak. Okay, right now it's already turning on. The LED is turning on and off, on and off. See, red color because the value is above 30 already. It's above 30, the threshold is 30. We call it threshold value. Above 30, then it lights up. The red LED. So there you have it, uh, a very simple program. If it's hot, turn on red. If it's cold, remove it. Later, it will go back to green, green color. Simple as that. So let's continue with our slides. No, we don't have much time. Um, okay. And I bring the switch back. So guys, I hope you learned something uh, from my very short demonstration. And it's a very quick one as well, but I hope you still can are able to catch one or two uh, knowledge. I understand that I go through the bits on the conversion of the temperature sensor quite fast, but that's all you need to know. You need to understand the data sheet and you need to understand the microcontroller that you're using. You yeah, need to understand ADC, uh, analog digital conversion. And once you understand all those, you will be able to do your own um, derivation on your formulas and convert into Fahrenheit or Celsius. Uh. So that's a little match going on, but of course you can Google and find the formula and just pump it in and be able to measure the temperature. All right, if you have more questions that you would like to ask, feel free to join our Telegram group here. It's meant for students. Uh, we keep the topic light. If you have questions about Arduino or Microbit or any other things that you would like to ask, join us. You can ask the questions over there. Okay, let's look at some questions. Teacher, what should we do of our contactless temperature sensor is not accurate. So contactless temperature sensor, it's a little different with uh, the temperature that I'm using, temperature sensor that I'm using right now. Contactless temperature sensor, the accuracy, actually the accuracy depends on the hardware. Right? If you look at the data sheet, it shows you what's the accuracy like. Some have different tolerance, one to two percent tolerance. Some have up to 10% tolerance. So it depends on what kind of contactless temperature sensor you're using. And make sure that the formula that you pump in is the right formula. But normally they will provide those formula as well. Okay, so um, I can't really tell you much without the detail, but of course you can always PM me. Um, check me up in the Telegram group. Check me up in the Telegram group and I'll, I'll be able to try to answer you over there. Okay. Uh, so next week, me again. Uh, it's a back-to-back -back session. I am trying to, you know, cover all the topics that I have started uh, about this coffee pot. And I know that the, from the previous part one session, it's like one month later only I have the part two. So I'm going to do a back-to-back -back session where next week I will be continuing with the part three where I will talk more on how you can improve this coffee pot. I will talk a little bit on arrays, how you can use arrays, uh, how you can do smoothing of your signal. Because when you see the signals that I receive, right, it's all like, you know, you know, very noisy. The signal is all very noisy. Okay. So I'm going to talk a bit more on how you can do smoothening, how you can smooth those signal, make it look nice, uh, make it look accurate so that when I, you know, when I put my code, right, my LED don't just on, off, on, 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 off like that. Okay? I, I want it to be accurate. So how am I going to do that? I'm going to introduce array and uh, smoothing techniques. Uh. Okay. So, don't forget to join me next week, same time, Saturday, 11 to 12. And last but not least, uh, feedback. If you love today's session, let us know. If you don't like today's session, let us know too. If you have something you want to share with me, if you want to hear something from a uh, you know, specific topic in our future session, do let us know. We will try our best to uh, come up with that session for you guys. But of course, we only have one hour per week. And we will try to make the best use of that time. And of course, if you're here for the e-certificate, just fill in the form, right? Let us know what you think. And 
make sure that you fill in the correct email address so you'll be able to receive the e-certificate. Okay, fill in the link over here. And I will see you next week, okay? I'm, I'm going to leave this slide here while I look at some of the questions. Oh, sorry, guys. Yeah, let me show you the link in the command here. Okay, I just dropped the link here. If you want to learn about the hardware used in this session, you can look at the description in this webinar series on YouTube or Facebook. I have already included the Maker Uno link and the um, temperature sensor. And if you want to watch the previous session, it's also in the description below. If there's no more questions, I am going to see you again next Saturday. All right. So thanks for tuning in again. Thank you, guys. I hope you enjoyed today's lesson and I will see you again next week. Have a good day. Bye.